Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Lee Code called Longest Increasing Subsequence. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given an integer array nums, return the length of the longest strictly increasing subsequence. A subsequence is different than a subarray because it does not have to be contiguous. So in example one, our output is four. The longest increasing subsequence is two, three, seven, one, one. It's not connected, right? These are disjointed and we can still output that and we have a length of four. Example two, again, the length is four. Here, our numbers are zero, one, two, three in our subsequence. And it can't actually be out of order. It can be one, zero, and then two, three, because this is subsequence. So for our output, we would need to find a subsequence that is increasing in indices and values. As we iterate through, we need greater numbers. So we have zero, one, two, and then three. Example three, we have all sevens. Now, since we want this to be strictly increasing, it has to be greater than, it can't be greater than equal to. So the maximum length we could make is just picking any seven and returning one as our length. And a follow-up, can you come up with an algorithm that runs in O of n log n time complexity? So we wanna find the longest increasing subsequence of a given input nums. Now, if you've seen increasing triplet subsequence, this is gonna be very straightforward. It is the same exact logic. And if you do wanna check it out, I have it linked down below. But as always, we're gonna start off with examples to really build up our reasoning. And if you're ever confused on what examples to pick, a good way to start is always looking at edge cases, right? The worst and best case scenario. So for this problem, what would be the worst case, the lowest number we would output for our subsequence? Well, that would be just one, right? And we saw that in example three, we had all the same numbers. So if all the numbers are equal or if they're all decreasing, our longest increasing subsequence will just have the length of one. And the best case scenario is if every single number is increasing, and in that case, our longest subsequence would be the entire length of the array. And that would be our output. Okay, say I had another example and it was 10, 22, 55, and then some more numbers. Right now, at this point, my maximum length of my longest increasing subsequence would be three, right? I have 10, 22, which is greater than 10, and 55, which is greater than 22. So this right here forms an increasing subsequence. For my remaining numbers, what numbers would I need in order to continue expanding to have a greater max length? I would need anything greater than 55. So this next number should be 56 or greater. And the number after that should be greater than the number before it. So if this was say 72, this has to be greater than 72. So let's say it's 84, in which case we would have a max length of five. But what if this wasn't 55? What if instead this was 23? Well, now our numbers only have to be 24 or greater. There's less of a limitation on our numbers because this number just got smaller. So now this could be say 24. Now, instead of being 84 and, and having to be 73 or greater, it just has to be 25 or greater. So say this was 25 instead of 84, we would still have a maximum length of five. So one thing to notice here is in order to have the longest increasing subsequence, we want our numbers to be as small as possible. That way we wouldn't have as many limitations on future numbers that we see, allowing us to take more numbers in and increase that length. So let's say I had another example. Okay, say I have this example right here. My input nums is 046356. What is the longest increasing subsequence? Well, going through this index by index, the first index I come across is this over here and my value is zero. So right now, if I were to make a subsequence, it would be of length one and it would just hold the number zero. Now, as I loop through nums, I want to see a number greater than zero in order to increase that max length, right? I can just add anything one or greater and increase that length. But what if it's not greater than zero? What can I do then? Well, instead, what I'm gonna do is start out at this lower number. Say if it was negative 10, I would actually replace this with negative 10 and start at this lower number now, right? Why start at zero when you can start at a lower number? This in turn will allow me to expand. In case I see a zero later on, I can now go ahead and increase that length, right? So right now I have zero and I am at this index over here. And let's go to the next number. Well, I see four. So this is greater than the last number I had here. So I'm gonna add this to my list and max length is now two. This means that now I need a number five or more in order to increase my maximum length. 
a subsequence of length two right now, the smallest one I can make, is ending in four. It goes from zero and then to four. So going to the next number again, I have six. Six is greater than four, the last number. So I'm going to append this to the list. And now my max length is three. So again, what is this representing, right? The smallest numbers that we can make at every single length. So of length one, I have zero. Length two, I'm ending in four, it's zero, four. And length three, it's ending in six, zero, four, six. Now I come across a three. This is not greater than six, so I can't increase my maximum length. But what I can do is bring it down the subsequences that I'm making so far. What I'm going to do is see what number I can bring down. Right now, I have a subsequence of length one, that's just a zero. Three is greater than zero, so there's no point in making a length one subsequence of value zero, that's already smaller than my number, to be three. So instead, let's look at the next one. So now I have zero, four as my length two subsequence. Now three is less than four, so what I'm actually going to do is replace this four to be three. This means the smallest subsequence I can make of length two now ends in three. And six will stay as is, right? The maximum subsequence I can make of length three is still going to end in six. So this is going to be zero, four, six. Now there's something to note here. This is actually not a valid subsequence. We're not keeping track of valid subsequences, right? Zero, three, six is not valid because we see zero, we see six, and then we see three. So the valid subsequence of length three was still going to be zero, four, six. All we're doing instead is updating the lengths that we're keeping track of. We're essentially, if you think about it, keeping track of multiple subsequences of varying lengths. At length one, we have zero. Length two, instead of doing zero, four, we can now do zero, three. And this doesn't affect any of the other subsequences, right? Because the one at length three is still going to end in six. So in order to have a subsequence of length four or more, I still need a number seven or greater. And this is because this is still referring to that zero, four, six that we saw. But what we do get by replacing this three, say we get a smaller number, say we see a four. Well, now we could be able to replace a six with a four, allowing us to have less limitations on future numbers, letting us grow. So now we would only need numbers five or greater if we did go with a four here to increase our maximum length. So now we go through and we come across five but it's five, it's not greater than six, so we can't increase our maximum length, but we can make subsequences smaller. So where would we put it? Well, let's start over here. Five is not smaller than zero, so there's no point in replacing this. Five is not smaller than three, but five is smaller than six, so this is now going to be five, which means I have a subsequence that ends in five for length three. Now this could have been zero, three, five, or zero, four, five, it doesn't really matter, right? We just care what that subsequence ends with because we just need a number greater than that to continue building up. So that's all we really need to store, right? We don't really care about what these middle numbers are. We just need these end numbers. And that's what we're storing in this list over here. So now once I go to my last number, I see a six. This is greater than the last number I had. So I'm going to add it over here. Now my max length is four. But if we never actually made those updates, if we were at zero, four, six, Seeing this six would never allow us to expand. We want to be greedy. We always want to keep our numbers as small as possible because that will allow us to have our subsequences as big as possible. So again, to recap, we're looping through. If our number is greater than the last number we have in this list, we increase max length. If not, we update our subsequences and just keep iterating. So let's go ahead and code all of this up and then run through another example. To code this up, the first thing I'm going to do is initialize an empty list. This is going to be storing all my subsequences and a maximum length. And as I loop through every single number of nums, I'm just going to check the last number of my list. If we're greater than the last number, we increase the max length and append to the list. If not, we just find subsequences to update and make smaller. So actually, since we are comparing, I'm going to start this off with that first number in nums. So max length is also going to equal one. And we're going to loop through nums. So for number in nums, and we're going to start off at index one, skipping over that first number we've already stored. If number is greater than the last number of our list, well, then we add it to our list. So list.append. Number 
and we increase max length by one. So max length plus equals one. Else, if that is not the case, what are we gonna do? We're gonna loop through and insert our number, right? Say we were doing zero, four, six, and we wanted to insert number three. Well, we're gonna start off with index zero. We're gonna start off right over here and we're going to loop through. So while index is less than length of list and list of index is less than our number. So right now we are less than our list and zero is less than three. So we're going to increase our index by one. So we're gonna move forward and make the same comparison again. Well, four is no longer less than number. So we are going to exit out of this for loop and replace this number over here. So list at index is now equal to this number. And this will essentially just replace it like this. And all we have to do at the end of this entire function is return max length. So let's go ahead and submit this and it's accepted. But there is something that we can do, right? Notice how we are basically looping through a sorted list every single time. It's strictly increasing, right? It's sorted. So instead of looping through every single time, why don't we just do a binary search and insert our number? And we've done binary search multiple times before. I have it linked down below if you do wanna look at that more in depth, but this is our basic binary search approach. We have our two pointers left and right, and we check the middle against the number we want input. So instead of doing all of this, we are going to have two pointers left and right. So left and right, they're gonna start off at zero and length of list minus one. So to visualize this as we code it up, say we had zero, two, five, seven, nine. And the number that we wanted to insert was eight. So while left is less than right, while our two pointers haven't converged and left is over here and right is over here. So while they haven't met, what is the middle? So middle is going to equal left plus right divided that by two. So middle is this over here. Now I want to make a check. So if list of middle is less than the number that I am on, so here five is less than eight, I'm going to move my left. So left is going to equal middle plus one. So mid plus one. Now we're going to be searching in this half over here. Else, what if that was not the case? What if the number we wanted to insert was four? Well, this if condition no longer holds true, right? Our middle is no longer less than our number which means it is greater than equal to it. So we wanna search in this half over here. So right is going to equal middle. Basically right just comes over here. And finally, we would break out of this while loop ones left and right have converged. So at either index left or right, let's just go with left, I would set my number. And I would do the same thing. I can just run this code now, so submit and it is accepted as well. Now this is just a little faster way to do this because we can make use of the fact that we are sorted and this time complexity would be n log n because for every single number in our input nums, we are going to be going through a sorted list and inserting. So that's gonna take log n time and we're gonna be doing that n times. So that's gonna be n log n. And as for space, we're only keeping track of one list and that is going to span the entirety of nums possibly. So that is going to be O of N. Now before leaving, let's just run through one example to really make sure we understand exactly what is happening. Okay, for our example, I've taken example two over here and we're just gonna do a walkthrough of our entire code. So the first thing we're gonna do is have a list of nums of zero. So that's just going to be whatever is that first index over here. So that's zero and max length is one. Now for nums in nums one onward, so we are looping through from here, we make a check number is greater than the last element in our list. That is true. So we are appending to list our number. So we're adding one over here and increasing max length by one. So that's two. Now we're back in this for loop. So number is now here. And the same check again, this is not true though, right? Zero is not greater than one. So we're in this else condition over here, which means we're doing our binary search. So right now it's gonna be a short one this is left and this is right. So zero, one are our indices. Our middle is going to be zero because it's zero plus one, which is one integer dividing that by two is zero. So our middle is where left is as well. And we're making a check. Is middle less than our number? It is not, right? It's equal. So we're gonna move right down, right to where middle is. So everything is now on the same index. And we go back in this while loop, we break out. Left is no longer less than right. They all point over here. And we just set to left our number. So we set it to be zero, which it already is. And we move on back into our for loop. 
Now we're at three and three is greater than the last number here. So we append it and increase our length to be three. We're back at the for loop and now we are at number two. Two is not greater than three. So again, we're gonna do our binary search, L and R over here. And what's our midpoint? That's over here. Now, list of middle, is that less than nums? It is, so we're moving left up over here. Now we go back into our while loop and this is no longer true. Left is not less than right, they're equal. So we are setting at index left, our number. So two is now over here. Now we go back into our for loop and we are going through it with number three. Three is greater than the last number we see. So we append it to our list and we have max length being four. So we're finally done traversing and we return our max length to be four, which is exactly what we were expecting. Now, if you have any questions with this at all, I do recommend checking out increasing triplet subsequence. Or if you do want to check out binary search more in depth, check out that video. Both are going to be linked down below. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. It will really support the channel. And as always, I will see you.